under the Son, under the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today, a beautiful passage our church is giving for our reflection. That is, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verses 26 to 33. That goes like this. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My friends, in today's passage, as we go through, there are four important messages our Jesus wanted to speak to us. Number one, Jesus is introducing his own father. We know in the Holy Gospel, all the Gospel writings, whenever we go through the passages, that most repeated name by Jesus is the name Father, his heavenly Father. Jesus tells to his disciples, whenever you pray, let it be for the glory of you, of our Heavenly Father. Whenever you do something, let it be for the glory of, of the Heavenly Father. And you pray like this. And Jesus told the prayer of our Father. Many times, repeatedly, he uses the word Father. Today, as Jesus is introducing his own Father, it is like, you know, whenever... We watch small children, neighbors, neighboring children. Whenever they quarrel, children used to complain, used to say to the other. The child is telling to the other that I will definitely complain to my dad. I will complain to my dad. By saying this, this child has got a great confidence in his dad. Dad will do something. That will solve the problems. It's a conference of the child. My friends, Jesus has got a, a great confidence in his father. And the, out of his experience, he was sharing, my father will do. My father is loving you. Even your hairs of your head is being counted. Father loves you than anything else. Jesus speaking more beautiful way. And here, Jesus is giving a beautiful example there. Verses 29. Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verses 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Are not two sparrows were sold for a penny? No, penny is the coin that, in, that is being used at that time, the time of Jesus, the least valuable coin, the basic coin, nothing gets out of this penny. But two sparrows are available with the pennies. That means sparrows are the birds least valuable. And here, in the Gospel of Luke speaks more or less the same, but a little difference. We read Gospel of Luke chapter 12 verses 6 
and seven. Jesus tells, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? See here, Matthew tells, two sparrows, one penny. And Luke say, five sparrows with two pennies. What is the difference here? Normally it comes two, spar two pennies, four sparrows. But how come five? The fifth number is a free. It's a free, as we know, my friends. Whenever we go to a market, for the marketing, buying something, that something we get as free. It has got the free additional, but it is just free of cost. And today God is telling that, even this free, and according to your consideration, accordingly that you consider this is least valuable, but that he has got a value and God has counted. You have not counted, but God has counted. Now Jesus is telling, if that is the case, how much more you have got the value? How much more that your life has got the value? Praise the Lord. My friends, Jesus is speaking about the love of his heavenly father. Unthinkable way, unimaginable way, Jesus loves you and I. And in the history of the Catholic Church, there are few saints who had a deep love towards the Heavenly Father. Let me introduce Alfon Aloysius of Bonsan. Today, church is celebrating the feast of St. Aloysius of Bonsan. He was born in 1568, died in 1591. He lived only to the age of 23, within the short period of time. This child, that he became a great saint in the Catholic Church. And at the age of nine, child was committed to the Lord. Special devotion and love towards God. At the age of 11, first Holy Communion he received. The time of the Holy Communion, once he opposed for confession, the first confession, he cried bitterly of his past two sins. He was leading a saintly life. But still he was crying and he was felt unconscious, fainted. And very next day he completed his confession. And his confessor used to say about him, Aloysius, Aloysius never committed any sin knowingly. This Aloysius was born in a very rich family, wealthy family. And his father was a landlord, Ferdinand Gonzaga, landlord. And he, as the eldest son in the family, supposed to be the successor of his father. But he, everything given the sign and document and told that I have no right and don't want anything. I want my Jesus. After signing everything, handing over the document and property, that he was with a smile speaking to his brother. Hello, brother. You may think I am a man. What is more important? Who is the more rich? Who is more happy? Now you are a very rich man. Everything is in your hand. And I have nothing. Who is more happy? And he said, I am more happy. Because in my heart, my Jesus is there. My Jesus is with me. Therefore, I am the one who is more happier than you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, a person who was filled with the, with the name, the person, Father. His heart was full of Heavenly Father. I was thinking that nothing is need for me, no money for me, because my heart is filled with the name, the person, Father. Then, another saint is a very famous saint, Saint Francis of Assisi. Saint Francis of Assisi, as he was born, in the place called Assisi. Father was Peter Bernard. After the conversion, he started helping the poor, taking the money from the pockets of uh, his father. And father was really fed up. He was complaining to his bishop. As he was brought to bishop, there Francis, he removed all the dress and gave to his father 
and in a na naked way, he was looking at heaven and was telling that now I can say about my father. I can call God as my heavenly father and my only father. Praise the Lord. See, a person filled with the name father. Jesus was always, his heart was filled with the name father. Most of the repeated words. And he was speaking about the love of his heavenly father. So the first point is that God loves you than anybody else and anything else in this world. Secondly, Jesus was telling to his disciples, if heavenly father loves you this much, then do not be afraid. Three times in today's passage, the word do not be afraid is been repeated. And in the Holy Gospel and the whole Bible, almost of 365 times, fear not is being repeated. What is the meaning of fear all about? Fear means a person is losing the confidence on himself. And something else or somebody else outside of him is dominating over him. For example, if a person is seeing a snake, if he has got a fear, even if he has got a stick, he will forget about the stick. He has less confidence on the stick and he was the dominating, snake is dominating over him and this fear, because of the fear, he will run away from there. See here, a power outside of him is dominating. If that is the case, we read a beautiful passage. First John chapter 4 verses 4. First John chapter 4 verses 4. The one who is within you is more powerful than the one who is outside. One who is within you is more powerful than the one who is outside. Praise the Lord. Who is within us? Within us is our Jesus. Jesus is within us. Our Heavenly Father is within us. If the Father is within us, then no power, no Satan, no enemy can attack and touch our life. Therefore, Lord is telling the second point, fear not. The third point today's passage gives us, that is of Matthew chapter 10 verses 27. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What is the meaning here? Darkness is the tragedy of our life. Darkness is the failure of our life. Darkness is the misfortunes of our life. For example, these days, world is suffering from coronavirus. Everywhere the people are affected, suffering. People are frightened of. And this particular case, what is the message? This is the darkness of your life, of our life. Darkness is the time God is speaking to us. Darkness is the medium God is speaking to us. If you listen to the Lord, you will hear on your ear the whispering voice of the Lord. If you hear, you will hear in your hearts the whispering voices of the Lord. Lord is speaking something, something the Lord wanted to communicate. Any tragedy that takes place in your life, it may be a tragedy in your family. It may be a tragedy in your community. It may be a problems that you are facing in your personal life, spiritual life. Remember my friends, the Lord has something to communicate. Lord wanted to communicate something to us. If you listen to the voice of the Lord, you will hear the whispering voice of our Lord, the message of the Lord there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The fourth point the Lord wanted to communicate. Once you hear, let you be proclaim this on the light. Whenever the light comes, you proclaim it. My friends, whatever we experience, whatever God is speaking to us, that has to be proclaimed. We are Christians. Christians means followers of Christ. We are supposed to proclaim the message of love, the message of God, the message of the Heavenly Father, the message of Jesus. My friends, and today's passage gives us the message. Number one, Heavenly Father loves you. Number two, do not be afraid because Father protects you. 
Number three, in the darkness of your life, your Lord is speaking to us. Number four, once you listen to the voice, voice, you have to proclaim through your life, through your words, through your ministry to others. Let us cross our eyes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the beautiful message that you have given to us. Give the grace so that we may live for you. We may proclaim you. We may listen to your voice. We may experience the love of the Heavenly Father. We make this prayer for Christ our Lord. Amen.